So for this last phase here, we're going to be adding texture to the uh, to the skin of the elephant using uh, some of these alphas here that are available for free from Pixel Logic. If you go to Pixel Logic, and then Support, and Download Center, and then click on the Alpha Library tab here, you'll get this menu, and then there's a Skins menu, and that will open up this. So some of these are really really great. I mean, it's probably elephant skin, right? So um, it's perfect. Uh, but some of these other ones are also useful, but in less obvious ways. So I have grabbed some of these. This is like a wrinkled skin here. You can see what it looks like. So that's good for armpits and that kind of thing. And then I'm going to maybe experiment with this for like elbows and knees. And then I'm going to try to cheat on the toes with this alpha. So these are all, again, free, very easy to find. Just go to pixelogic.com, ZBrush. Uh, download center alpha and then uh, click on the skin submenu here and you should uh, get all of these things and there's other ones in here that are also very useful so encourage you to take a look at that so here is the elephant and I've added some detail to it some of the larger detail and the thing about when you start with the, the skins is it's it can be kind of difficult to continue making the, the, the high level sculpt so for instance if I wanted to come over here and kind of clean that up it's going to be tricky if there's fine detail on there. I mean, it's no big deal. You just basically have to go over and, and add the fine detail back in. So uh, this is really something that you should you should be patient with and wait till the very end. That's that's the point of that. Okay, so I'm going to go to my standard brush, and I've already got it set up here. So normally this is set to dots or freehand, but I'm going to go to drag rect, and then I have already imported my wrinkles alpha, but here they are, they're all laid out there. So I'm going to set my Z intensity to something like 12, but before I begin doing this, this was an okay resolution to sculpt this bigger detail on, but I can just do a little test here. I can see it's not really holding the detail as well as I'd like it to. So I'm going to give it one more subdivision, and this is where if you've got a big model, it can be it can potentially be a little bit of a, of a hassle, but uh, let's see. So for this one, this is after the remeshing and projecting at 11 million polygons, which is actually pretty high, but it's going to hold this detail really nicely and, and uh, my system can handle it fairly well, so I'm not too worried about it. So I have symmetry turned on and I'm going to keep symmetry turned on for most of this, but as I get to the top and back, I'm going to turn it off so that you don't see that, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, it's not totally obvious, but you know, pretty easy to keep it from from doing weird symmetry stuff. So, I'll just kind of leap in here, and the way I like to do this is kind of vary the angle that I drag the stroke out uh, stroke out at, so the the wrinkles read as being kind of naturally arrayed on the skin. And sometimes maybe over these these wider areas where the skin might be stretched a little bit tighter, I'll go a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to go around the entire thing, except for a few spots. I'm going to leave the toe area blank and uh, on both legs, so I can come in and, and add the, the toes. It may not work great, but I'll give it a shot. If it does work, it'll be a lot quicker than sculpting it in. So this is the center here, so I'm going to try to avoid that area as well. And you can come down there. Just kind of continue around each stroke at a slightly different angle and gets pulled out a slightly different length so it doesn't read as being too repetitive and when you think about how the whole thing is done with a single alpha you know the, the power of this technique is is uh, apparent I'm gonna watch that center area there So 
just about done. And because this is visible, it might have been it might have been a good idea to not do this symmetrically because you you can really see it there. But I don't think it's a big deal. If this was for you know a production asset, I'd be a lot more careful with stuff like that. So anyway, go ahead and turn my symmetry off, and I'll just kind of come in and. Hit this top area here. Try to get a nice even coating with that one. And for the face, I'm going to use the same alpha, but maybe just turn it down a little tiny bit. Zoom in a notch. travel around. See, I probably could have turned symmetry on for this section here. Once I start messing with symmetry, I usually screw it up a little bit, but it is okay. So and I've got another alpha that I'm going to use for the front of the trunk there. And I come in and kind of add some more detail there. And I don't have the reference up, but the ears, they tend to stay pretty smooth. So I'm going to, maybe I'll just reduce the intensity and add a little bit of something there. But the outsides are definitely going to be, I mean, by the outsides, I mean like this area here. And this is going to be mostly concealed. Assuming I retopologize and actually bend those ears back. Okay, so that's all with just that first alpha there. Now let's take a look at this next one. Let's hear this wrinkles. So if I come in, this one I need to increase the intensity a little bit so I can see what's going on. And this one is very dependent on being dragged out in the correct direction. And I think that looks good, but I'm actually going to turn my symmetry on here. And I'm holding Alt so that it pushes it down. And we can do the same thing over here. Anywhere it's going to kind of bend, we could just sort of throw this one in. And I think it might actually work okay on the front here, so I'm going to turn symmetry off. And maybe reduce the intensity. And then I'll go the other direction here so that it doesn't look too repetitive. I think that's looking okay. use it for these little wrinkles 
by the back side. Whoops, I need to go the other way, I think. Yeah. So you can totally overlap these, but it can also get a little bit noisy, which may not be, you know, inaccurate, but just something to be aware of. I think I'm actually going to maybe start this in the middle here and go the other direction. Well, that's probably okay. Oops, looks like I hit that somewhere. So because I haven't actually added any detail there, I can just go in and kind of fix it. Okay. So let's go ahead and see about some elbows here. So we'll go back to standard and we'll go to import. Grab the knuckle. And let's just throw a little knee in there. Whoops, I'm going to turn symmetry back on for this. And then maybe one over here on the elbow. So you can see the, the stuff here is kind of fighting the, the uh, stroke beneath it. So I'm going to just kind of clean some of this noise up off of there. A little bit. I'll try that again. Okay. So let's see. We got one more in here. The fingernail. So I should probably look at reference before I start putting these in. I don't really know exactly what an elephant toe looks like. But because there isn't a whole lot going on in the boundary, I'm actually going to increase my focal shift or decrease my focal shift so I get a tighter a tighter read on this. And then I'm gonna just do a little experiment, not so much there. In fact, I think for this one it might be interesting, this might work, to use the uh, stroke because that's basically gonna allow me to start the draw a little bit higher and then just kinda move it down so I get a better better shot at placement and I'm actually going to turn lazy mouse off for this I'm not real sure why that's on so I'll get a little bit of a smoother uh, stoic placement. And I think that's about the right size. The other thing that's nice about doing it this way is all of this, the marks are going to be more consistently sized. And I think that's okay. Might go a little bit bigger back here. And I don't know if they have three toes or four toes or five toes. Whoops. And you can see I got a little sloppy there with my skin texture. But with the flatten brush, you can come in there and clean that up without too much trouble. And maybe kind of move that out a little bit. And so now I can maybe use the inflate here to go around the boundary. Give a little bit of a cuticle type thing maybe. Oh, 
Okay, back to wrinkles. Take the intensity down a bit. Let's switch it to drag rect. I think I'm actually going to maybe come over and I'll uh, just pay that pay that nail down a bit. All right. So added some detail, some stuff to the skin there. And now I think I'm going to use the magnify brush. Magnify and inflate in this case will probably work about the same. But I like the magnify because it will basically preserve whoops. Looks like I grabbed the exact opposite brush from the one I meant to grab. Let me try that again. Magnify. So magnify will preserve that skin detail. So what you can do is throw a little alpha on there something with a little bit of a tight fall off give it some lazy mouse and a lazy radius of about 30 is probably okay and maybe just add a few more kind of bigger wrinkles just for the heck of it So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this has been useful and uh, you know, stick around, like my channel and, and I'll keep posting tutorials like this and uh, feel free to comment or shoot me an email. Thank you.